Okay, so on the, on the final submission, there is a part that says report on challenges faced in automatic mi uh, migration, and then you are required to like add comments on the new functionality offered by um, PostgreSQL and Superset over the former uh, data stack. I think what that part specifically is um, asking for is like um, that there are some um, commands that has changed in um, like previously we're using MySQL and now we're going to be using um, PostgreSQL and there are some commands that has changed in terms of probably how you were joining tables together in MySQL is different from how you're going to be joining in, in um, PostgreSQL and for the um, automation bit, it's just like um, next time that we 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 are uh, asked to like do uh, a migration, and we are still um, using you know another um, database with different kind of joins and data in them, there should be like a if a function that would um, automatically recognize this particular bit of my SQL is not the same thing as um, Postgres SQL, and that would like change the code format and would um, allow a proper uh, migration from my SQL to a, a Postgres um, SQL. From my understanding, that is like the bit that I get um, out of it. Do you have something in contrary to that? Or do you agree with what I said? Okay, are we going to have a script that automates uh converting MySQL commands into Postgres, say SQL? Yeah, that is what I think. That's what I think. You know, like the migration bit would like, some of the tools that are saying for uh, migration will take the codes that you have used to um, create a database in MySQL, and then it will format all of that codes into um, uh, the database that you're trying to migrate to now, which is like the Postgres SQL. So they've, Formats at which um, you are creating tables in MySQL is different from how you would create tables in Postgres SQL. Like that's like a simple um, explanation, and the migration bit will just say change. I mean, still create this table, but using this command because now I'm creating the table in Postgres SQL and not um, MySQL. So all of the other um, code bits that requires, I mean, that you have used in creating probably joints or um, fact table or, 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 or another table in my SQL, and the all of the syntax are kind of different in Postgres SQL. So you need to like uh, probably create a function that would recognize all of this format and say if this is this, then change this to this in this particular query. And then created the database. I mean, create the table in the Postgres uh, database. That is my thinking. Okay, thank you. And but what about the redash? Like, should redash? Um, what about redash? Is it, is it? It says on the report, he, he it mentions both MySQL and redash. So. Um, we we are not like the codes that we have used to generate um, dashboards and data views in Redash. It's similar to what we would use in um, Superset, right? Like it's is the like the interface itself is even the same thing. Like it's similar, and I am not expecting too much of code change there. So the automatic thing will just be like you are writing either new codes or you are using the code that you you add for Redash in um, MySQL. And you know, like the transformation that you have done in DBT specifically, that you created some tables or views to answer specific questions that you generate yourself, are still going to be like the same thing that you would use in um, Superset, and nothing more will change. The code will be the same thing in Redash and Superset. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody else like read the challenge and? One bit is not clear, or things that we need to like uh, discuss more. So it's just like an informal Q and A. So just ask um, your question, and then let's clarify bits that are not clear. No, 
No questions? Uh, maybe I can add, okay, it seems to be someone. Ah, okay, so I don't, okay, I think Elias first, then Mubarak and uh, Fumban. Yes? Okay. Uh, the other bit I want to ask was, like, the data was, like, really challenging to do some visualization, like, after building the tools, like, we really, we, do, we couldn't do much with it. So I was thinking, like, can we use data from the previous challenge? Because that uh, would mean, really make us to be able to do some information thing. Yeah, that would allow you to build some useful dashboard and insight. But the, the challenge that we have, like, the target of the, I mean, the goal of this project is not the insight that we are able to communicate to business owners. The goal is that you can build your own data tools tech stack, and you know the function of DBT, you know the functions of MySQL, you know the reason why you need to migrate from Redash to Superset. You can answer all of these questions. That is like the goal of the project. Um, you, deriving insight out of the data is not one of the things that is important in, in this particular project but being able to know how each tool communicates and when to use what and the advantage and the disadvantages of this tool over this tool. Like if you can state all of these things um, in a very efficient way, then you have achieved the goal of the project. So building a very insightful dashboard um, is not one of it. It's nice to have, but it's not one of it. So sticking with um, this data is just uh, the way to go. But like after the um, training, you can you know pick up a project that you like the data and then do the same thing over again. And then this time around, you build insightful um, dashboards. That answers your question. Yes. Um, Barak, you want to raise your hand? Uh, okay, uh, my um, question is about Airflow. For the previous project, I was having issues setting it up both on my existing and on Docker because Docker, whenever I start it, it kind of hooks my laptop and I just stopped trying to use it. So I don't know if using Airflow is really, really necessary or it's kind of important. Like, I don't know. Although I was able to mm. do some few things last week without using the airflow at all, like loading the data into the data, mm. it took a greater part of my time. But I just want to like confirm if it's a must to go with airflow because it is giving me a very serious issue. Yeah. Um, it is necessary that you use um, airflow to um, load the data. One of the advantages of, uh, or one of the reasons why we have asked you to use um, Airflow to do data is specifically because, like, if you work in an uh, in, uh, industrial settings and the data that you are loading is not the one that is like residing on your local um, machine, such that um, you can easily just like run a particular code and it will read from your local device and push to a data uh, whereas like if the data is continuously uh, like it's been updated on a regular basis or on a like scheduled kind of thing then you would need to like automate the process at which you get the data from this particular um, store and then you put it to a particular location where it's actually usable and um, useful and then to sort all of these things out as a data engineer or as required in the industry um airflow is one of the two to orchestrate this extraction and loading bit. And that's why we have asked you to use um, Airflow. Um, using, I mean, setting up Airflow is not supposed to be hard. It's like, it depends on the um, environment that you are setting it um, on. Like for instance, if you're using um, Windows, I imagine like you might face um, some issues setting it up. But if you go in the route of creating a virtual environment and then you, you know, people install the um, necessary things, I think it should just work fine. Like there should be a proper way of doing it via virtual environment. 
and if um, it's still like failing, Docker is a little bit, uh, it, if you have like an high hand um, system, it's kind of easy to set up Airflow with Docker as well. So using um, Airflow is like important in this um, project and that would ensure that you have a full um, data tech stack as you would have hope that you do, right? So um, find, the, find a way of um, solving it because it's important. Hi guys. Hey, sorry. I, for some reason, I just didn't see the time. So, okay, just continue the discussion and then I will get in uh, later. Just. Yes. Okay. That answers your question. Okay. Um, from Ban, yeah, I'd raise your hand. All right, so last week I was using Postgres as my database, and I was wondering, like, so this week I'm, I'm supposed to use my SQL, right? You set up your data warehouse with Postgres last week. Yeah. Now, um, you can still like experience the data migration bit, but you know, one of the reasons why you need a migration is probably because there's some limitations as to the tool that you're using or you need to scale in this case, in the business context of this project, um, the new investor wants you to like, because of scaling purposes. So you want to like accommodate more uh, data into your um, data warehouse. And one of the limitations of the MySQL is like, I think 50 million rows maximum. And probably we are thinking of something a little bit more than that. Uh, maybe to like experience the uh, migration bit you can, migrate to uh, MySQL, but then that's like downgraded. Um, Yavi, do you want to like add to this? I, I think that's that's correct. Um, so the whole point, I don't know, I haven't heard the discussion so far, but the whole point is really that there is a migration and you need to experience migration. The challenge in migration um, and that needs to be whichever way you are migrating to MySQL or Postgres, but you need to migrate the database and understand the complexities involved. It, it's about preparation. Like someone will ask you, it's like, okay, so you did a migration project, um, and so what did you experience? You know, where, where should we focus? In production, in dev environment or staging environment, you know, you know we, we, like the complexities, it's a practicality of life that actually matters more than a project, right? So, and unless you go through it, you will not be able to understand and or answer um, some questions in the interviews and stuff. So whichever way, migrate. And when you migrate, it isn't about creating a Postgres uh, database and then populate the data. That's not gonna be the case because that, that we know you can, or you should be able to do it. What is more important is that how are you gonna migrate? Write a script that will just migrate one database. Assume that database, you don't know how it's populated. You just, somebody told you, okay, here is a database and here are tables or just understand even the tables and then migrate them towards a different database. So within that context, you, you should be able to plan accordingly. So you, so the whole point is experience that because it's necessary. So, okay. Yeah. So, from my understanding, I can just like migrate from like the current database that I have in Postgres. I can just migrate it to a different database, but in the same Postgres. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, I I, I want to ask. I don't know. Maybe Abu Bakar, you can explain to me. So, what was the discussion and the stand based on? the last 30 minutes, whatever discussion you guys have. Uh, um, like the, the, what is the, the current project? Is everybody clear? Did you ask? So what is, what, what, what happened? Um, I asked that um, who has gone through the <coughs> challenge documents and about three, four um, trainers raised their hand and then um, I was asking them their understanding of, of the challenge and if they have um, any questions, it's like clarifications and stuff. And that's what we were discussing when you joined. 
did you guys have brainstorming earlier as well on questions? Was there um, a question I, session? I think it, it didn't happen. I'm not Sorry? Sure it didn't, oh, like we didn't have a session for brainstorming. That, that okay. Time. Great. So I want to hear just randomly now how, like, so I want everyone to answer just a very basic question. How comfortable are you with the tasks that are listed? By comfort, I mean you have to average uh, whether you understand it. If you understand it, whether you think you will be able to do it by Thursday, and then sum that, and then feel like okay, if you say like comfortable, that means like roughly you get it. Roughly, it's in a similar format as last week, whatever, and you you have kind of a, an understanding to go and start doing. And then uh, so so is kind of when you think that there are things that you didn't read it or for some reason, whatever, you don't know if you don't understand it in, in, in that one. And then you say like, no, I'm not at all um, confident. Then that means like, basically you went through it, but you didn't understand it. So I, I'm gonna go from Abraham, just I'm gonna call a name and just think about, you know, where you are in that. Um, maybe even better to type it so that I, I can remember. So if you can type, Either whether you're comfortable, so-so, or not uh, not that comfortable. If you type it, just so that I will know how many people are comfortable. So type your answer in, and I want everybody's. So everybody who is here listening, I want you to type your label about the current week because the current week ends on Thursday. Um, so okay. One comfortable, we are live and um, live counting. I mean, guys, are you thinking? If you are thinking, great. But if you are not, you just have to. I, I didn't ask, I asked it a very, very, very small ask. If you understand the question, we can also ask. So sort of is I'm understanding it to be so-so. So there are 20 people and there are only very few answers. Either you are, you are thinking, which is good in that case, or you are passive, which is not good. So we have only nine people. I'm on. So only 13 people so far. So
Is there anyone who hasn't replied? So far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So who hasn't replied? I'm just gonna browse. Hi Rat. Can you unmute? So now, because you didn't reply, I'm just I just want people who hasn't replied so far to unmute and tell me, Kairat. Kairat Ayinde. Maybe there is no one behind that mic. Okay. Is there anyone else who didn't reply while he while they are there? Probably not. It's only Kairat, maybe. Okay. So that means we have very many who didn't get comfortable. So just I just wanna understand Stacy and uh, Rache. So Stacy, what what is the issue? With the resource. Uh, okay, I just find it difficult working on Windows. Most of the resources you find for installing these things tend to be more inclined towards the uh, Linux, mm. and it's just a bit difficult to work uh, on Windows. Mm. Um. Even so, if you, if, you, if Docker works, you know that everything becomes easier. So you didn't manage to make, to make it work, Docker, because you know once Docker is installed, it doesn't matter, or virtual machine, for example, it doesn't matter. Then you know you can install Linux within that. Did you manage to make Docker work? Yeah, yeah last week I installed the Airflow and dash using Docker. Uh, but uh, I do. I, I don't. I'm still not comfortable with it because uh, mm. when I have my SQL on my computer, uh, I can easily see the tables, and uh, I'm not yet sure how to do that with Docker. It is possible, except as you said, it might take a little bit more time to get used to the how to connect. You know, the whole point of networking. I understand networking is not that easy uh, if you don't know it already before. So that means opening a port, connecting that port. But if you just check, like, okay, connect graphical thing to Docker, it should just be easy. It's just like a browser. You know, there is a server inside there, and there, you know, then you should be able to just, just like in AWS, you you could access your Jupyter notebook through SSH, and it's the same in Docker. You could just open anything from docker attach a graphical thing to it um, so it shouldn't be that difficult but of course you know what keyword you use to search it and to find it it's sometimes not easy but um i would say just spend one full day getting used to that it is key just okay. be able to you know to to work like that is very useful, especially you are much more on data engineering, right? Yeah. So I think this thing must be, you should just be, you know, default, be able to connect. At least there are a few things like opening a port, connecting with that, attaching, seeing something on a browser or something that should be, should be like, if, otherwise just get either Kevin or Abu Bakr. It doesn't mean they know or they will solve it, but just work with them to solve it. Just screen share and, and, and try to get some insights. Okay, I mean. Be aggressive. I think my advice right now is that you have only four days, five days. It's fine. You're going to do most of whatever things you will learn them at the job. But just, you know, 
good to be aggressive now and, and you know kind of get that confidence and you all are i think more or less in my from my perspective most of you are ready um it's like for what you you may you may need is just that aggressiveness like that it's kind of like okay i'm just gonna do it nothing stops me and i'm gonna use a resource around me it's kind of that commitment to consider and treat yourself like this is work but um okay and rachel what is your case okay uh i've been able to say the environment uh i've been able to say the docker and install it uh yeah I, I tried to install the environments that i had to work on uh but i faced the issue while trying to land the dpt uh that issue that made me like it's brought me to have a such progress okay so that means like you or you solved last week's issue so it's just that because you had so many issues last week you think this week you're not yeah. sure you yeah, yeah. Because, yeah they are more connected and they are somehow similar so i do, i don't think if uh, if i didn't do it last week uh i'm trying just uh i'm trying to do best so that i can understand last week's challenge or have a progress yeah so so the dif the difference between this week and last week is very sim small it's just migration this one has automation and migration so it's basically uh you are automating moving from one tech stack to another tech stack so hopefully the concept is identical it's just and that the work mostly is about how can i migrate something uh, towards another one and how can i automate it you know of course if you were to do it by hand it wouldn't take you much because then you've done it last week it's just and, and you would be asking sure the same I, thing uh, as last week if you were to just to do it on a different selection of text stacks but it's the automation part of the migration okay and yes. then yes and then i see that saba germain amon blaze sibitinda in particular um and then, and then some of you, you have so so. So I just want to hear a few so so's. So can I start from you, Saba? So why so so? Or like, what is, how can you turn the so so into comfortable? What do you, what do you, what are you missing? Saba? Okay. Hello? 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 Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, for this week's challenge, I understand the steps that we, we are going to follow, but I don't understand the super sets how are we going to do that i didn't read well that's the only thing i don't understand for now okay but do you understand what it represents no i don't but it, it is a that so redash did you do something in redash last time no i didn't do that part so, so redash or per se are basically tools that you can use to create dashboards so easily you can you can create uh, or automate programmatically uh, dashboards so, so which which track are you going on, on that engineering yeah in that case i would really strongly recommend you just to focus on that and dbt um, such that you know it's, it's just all of them are not that much difficult. They just need systematically understanding. So first is understanding what it is for. Now you know, as simple as now I told you, if you haven't, if you were more confident, it's about dashboard. DBT is about writing some, uh, automating some transformations. And basically they just, uh, now it's about 
putting together in an automatic. So it shouldn't, in principle, take. I mean, definitely takes some time to read and understand. But in terms of finishing it, I don't think it will take you that much. Um, so just be comfortable. Okay. Yeah, if you could be comfortable by the end of today, that would be great. If you don't have that much time, it's Thursday. So make sure to read. I know it could be like holiday or whatever, but just at least read and make sure that you're comfortable. You know exactly, um, you know, in your head it's clear what to do and what each are. You should be able to stay comfortable by the before you sleep today. Okay. Okay. So, Jermaine, for example, why is kind of what will help you to be comfortable? Hello, everyone. Hey. Okay. Actually, uh, I'm uncomfortable in the part of like, having an, uh, a working environment because it's been difficult for me for installing materials because all materials I've seen, they more simply installed from Docker. And Docker is, isn't working for me since since day one, and I've been trying to reinstall it, same issues comes out, that it always fails to start the engine. Then, on the did, side did of being one to, Did you talk to Kevin? Not, not at all, but I, I mentioned the issue in the stand-up. Yeah, get hold of him. Even if he says, like, I'm busy, it's, it's not Kevin's responsibility sometimes to make your system work. You have to be aggressive and say like, okay, Kevin, please, can you help me? I mean, imagine this is work. Would you get fired because someone couldn't, like, didn't have, were busy? And then you assumed it's fine. Do you want to get fired just for that? Because, you know, someone was busy? Uh, no. I, I Nobody was... wants that. So I, I would say this is work for me. It's really work. Like I see it as work. So get hold of him. Say like, okay, Kevin, when can you get uh, free? Can I can I get just one hour of your time, please? And you know, if he's not replying, like kind of put it whatever, and put it in the open channel, saying like, at Kevin, can you please help me on that? And I'm, I'm I'm saying it not only to you, to everyone. Be aggressive. Just have that mentality of like, I will do it. And there is challenge, I may not solve it because I need some support and I need to get that. And I'm not gonna get, you know, it's like just uh, pass another day without solving something. And it's really that mentality is all you can think of that you will get from us. The rest, many, many of the knowledge, you will get them at work. And the one thing that will remain with you and making you the most, you know, the best of you is aggressiveness. But knowing that it will be solved, it can be solved, and that you changed your character, your mindset to solve something. If you have the two combinations, nothing will stand in front of you. And I, I am saying that, like, if you don't doubt, just trust me on that. The best you can get from all this is the mindset change. Knowing something can be solved, will be solved, and it just needs to be solved when you want it. That means you are selfish to solve your problem right there. So that kind of like, okay, you know, somebody has solved it, it will be solved, it can be solved. I probably don't have the right you know, mindset, maybe just the, the skill at this moment. I mean, it will be solved and I will help other people later. But at this point, I want somebody to help me and solve it. Because if it's solved, it's easy and it's gone. That problem is no more your problem. And if you want to make problems, you know, just the past things. You don't want them to be, uh, you know, the future things, which is like ongoing, like the ING version. You want problems as soon as possible to be passed. I had this problem, I want to say. Not like I'm having this problem. Because the more you are using the having this problem, I can tell you, you are going to be not the one, the type of person we want you to be. 
Um, so if you can drive, if you drag your problem for a while, then you become normal. I mean, it doesn't mean anything, but you become normal. That's exactly what the world does, or they usually the Nantan Academy version, I would say, uh, would do. We want exactly just that aggressiveness and people to have like, you, you are skilled, we don't doubt, we, we are not there, like we pass that level. You are amazing, you are absolutely gifted and talented. It's not a question of that, but the, mental, the mentality sometimes, like the mental picture you have may not have changed. And it's time in these three, four weeks, four days, that you change at least that one if you haven't, because it's already there. It's just only it needs like done. You know, I'm that's it. I'm not gonna graduate without my mental shift. So don't stay one day without solving something. Find all the resources available to you. And tomorrow, if it's not solved, and when you say why it's not solved, you should say to yourself, it's because I tried everything I can, and for some reason, just someone couldn't help me or something. It should be with that. Okay. Yeah, so get hold of him, make Docker work. It will work, it has worked for many people. There is nothing special about that. It may be difficult because I know sometimes computers, the way you install them, the drivers, whatever, it's complex. But it's like try the best you can. In that case, install maybe virtual machine, use it in that way, but something. Okay? Great. Great. Okay. Uh, Amon, somewhat, somehow, how can we turn that into comfortable? Okay, for my case, I think um, uh, I really have a clear understanding of uh, the expectation, but when it comes to the part of automation and uh, due to the fact that I didn't finish quite well last week. Uh, my SQL failed to work uh, almost the whole, uh, the whole days of last week, but it worked yesterday uh, after taking quite long time uh, trying to debug. So um, the, the, the part of automation is really uh, not coming well for me because I was thinking maybe we are going to start from scratch, like loading data again to, you know, but of course using maybe previous codes that we used last week to this now a new database. And then as we proceed, just like last week manually. Yeah, but you know that that is not the case. So this week is not to do the same thing using a different take like last week. This week is migration. Amon? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah. So 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 what what makes you what do you what makes you write the so so somehow and where do you think is gonna be your you know, weak link or how can we turn turn it in comfortable? So what is, what is missing? Like, uh, I would really love to get to know where that automation really comes in. Uh, yeah, are we going to, you know, continue using the same repo or what exactly yeah. are we expected to, to do here? Okay, that's, that's easy to answer. You're going to use the same thing. Now, imagine you had uploaded the data into a database, right? Let's imagine you have three tables, yeah? Yeah. And it is in MySQL, and it has a certain way. Now, you want to migrate that, basically, to Postgres. So that means you are going to run some code, let's call it migrate database.py, okay? Yes. So in that, you write something, and by the end of running Python 3, migrate database.py when you run it, by the end, what you what you get is uh, a Postgres database with every data that's there, tables that's there, but now it's in a Postgres database, right? Okay. And let's imagine you have another code called uh, migrate uh, dbt. 
or like some macros, right? So it may be just like, maybe then what it does is that it replaces some text, whatever, I don't know what how you write it, but imagine that it's like the final script you have is that it is the basically the the dbt that you wrote for for mysql is now upgraded and it's ready to be used by um basically using postgres and then it could be airflow you may have certain uh, dags like that are written for mysql something if you have then you have also added for postgres and then you had probably also uh, a redash, like some uh, dashboard that was written or that assumes the endpoint is a database. Uh, and then, uh, you know, in redash, like in redash terminology, now that is also migrated. And at the end, that's actually the dashboard that you will see is from Superset. OK. So that basically you wrote scripts, let's imagine three scripts that migrate everything. And when you run them sequentially or parallelly or something, then by the end, what you have is a different text stack. That is Postgres, dbt that is connected to Postgres, and superset that is kind of accessing Postgres. But all that was done using, basically, you, you wrote some script to migrate it. Right? Okay. Is that clear though? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you are using basically you know, the same thing. Okay. Elias? Okay. Um, I was asking the same question earlier. And like what I get from my worker was on the migration part, what we are going to do is my drag scripts or like SQL. We wrote for MySQL. And then we are going to write a script that converts for into Postgres and like also on DAX and everything. But from now when you are answering, like you said, for example, our Redash dashboard, we are going to convert it into Superset. And that's really confusing because like for one, adding Redash into the Docker file is really complex. And like the containers would be like more than 10. And also for Superset, I've seen it and there are a lot. So to do that, we are going to need a lot of computational power. And also like superset on Redash, like it's user interface, you don't write any code, so there's nothing to convert. So that's a confusing problem. A little bit clarity of that. So in principle, that there must be whatever it is, like you, you may not chose to write the script, but you definitely there should be a configuration that you wrote that would access which database and how. I mean, at the whole point, I mean, again, uh, I will have to come back by just reading the different details, but the whole point of Redash and Superset is just you can actually script them and, you know, that the dashboard basically can can have a configuration and then um, you define what the interface looks like and the same thing you can define whatever you define for rehash then you can actually define it for superset it's like but in its own basically in its own the equivalent class so abu Bakr, have you do you have experience maybe just um you can intervene here um, in terms of migrating the database, like I was, there, there's like a mention of automatic uh, migration. My initial guess was like we just we have like a code that checks the format at which we have defined some schemas and tables in uh, MySQL, and then that would like change it to the appropriate um, data well at which we want to migrate to. So in our case, uh, Postgres SQL. So all the um, all our schemas will be transformed into uh, a, a Postgres enabled um, schema that we can then load into a Postgres uh, database. So that's like my um, understanding of it. I'm just gonna I'm, I'm searching in the meantime. Yeah. Redash. Um, 
And then for like um, changing readers to um, superset, they, they basically would use um, the same code since readers is reading from the output of our uh, DBT transformations, right? So there's no need of uh, uh, changing codes uh, for producing data views on superset. So we, we don't like touch any of the code bit. Okay, I am. I am. I will get back to you. No, but I I have seen it many places that people can migrate easily just from one to another using. Uh, uh, so, for example, I'm just looking at this um, Zario or Elias. Who I, I don't know who was asking yeah. that Elias. Yeah. Um, so, for example, that is one. I'm just thinking uh, that's a code that we just do migration from somewhere to somewhere, right? Um, and so that's again from redash to redash, but it's actually um, okay. you can do very similar okay. as long as you, I, I'm talking about like migrating a dashboard, not migrating a, a table. And that was the question that Elias was asking. So if you def if you define your like anything these days, I think the whole point is that you can write if you are creating thousands of dashboards, you know, the business logic that you defined has to be written somewhere in a script. And and then you have to migrate that to create it into another one. Let's say you then you spin a server or a docker uh, for like let's say a superset and then the business logic that you defined to create a redash dashboard should be created now syst systematically that means through a script to a superset one and you should be able to do that and that was at my understanding also when stefan was you know the bringing because they have thousands of redash and they want to convert it into um superset and they don't want to do that by hand. They want to write a script. Is that clear, or is that am I missing something? I, it could be that I'm missing something because I am talking from not experience perspective, but just from the logical perspective. And I and and just I know that was the discussion we had with Stefan as well. But maybe Elias, is that clear, or am I? Do you feel that is that is underestimating the issue that we have? Is LS dropped? But anyone can speak about that. LS? Yes, I was having difficulty with connection. I didn't hear yeah. that. I know, I understand. So what I am saying is that from my discussion with Stefan when we designed the project was that they have thousands of redash uh, dashboard and they want to migrate that into superset systematically. They don't want to write by hand anything. And so the business logic that creates a redash uh, dashboard from a database sh should be easily migrated and that business logic can be migrated to superset. Mm -hmm. And is that your understanding or do you feel there is some misunderstanding? Yeah, like when we used Redash, like it has a user interface and I think it wasn't designed for developers, like anyone can use it. Anyone, yeah. for example, anyone with less tech and background in tech. So like it has a user interface and you write simple queries and then it's easy to visualize. So like yes. we don't have codes that create visualization and queries. We just use the interface. So like but right that, now, that, we don't have that query, Let's talk about that query, exactly what you said. That's called the business logic. The business logic that created the dashboard. And that, that business logic means the query that he, that he created. Now, can you create like that one automatically? So can you connect with the Redash API 
to create that one, that query. No, I don't think so. But we can save the queries and use it later. Or... Yeah, I think that so, would be good. So, yes. So, that what, what is the point is that whatever is necessary to create a dashboard, you can definitely automate. That means maybe load it from a file um, and and then use it again. It could be a script or it could be just like a query, uh, SQL just uh, file. Then you can use it then appropriately into in Superset. There should be, I mean, at least that was what Stefan was saying. If not, I'll get back to you. But there should be, you should be able to, the reason why people don't go to uh, Tableau is exactly for that reason. Tableau, the business logic and the dashboard are together. That means you do everything by hand. While Superset and Redash, the advantage is that you can actually uh, create create them, like you can separate the business logic and the dashboard. And what we really want to uh, automate is the business logic, which means the, the SQL query that you need to do. So let, let I'm, I'm going to get back on that, but that is the point. It's like if you had a thousand, you know, if you have been using it for a year or two years on Redash, creating different dashboards for different business needs, now if you want to migrate the whole thing into uh, Superset, you want to avoid writing it by hand, creating all those dashboards by hand. You need to automate it. And that could just be like just the queries that created that dashboard. It could be as, as simple as that. Does that make sense, Elias? Or we need more discussion? I think we need probably more discussion, but um, but does that make sense at least? Yeah, but like I have to look into like if I can save the queries that were, yeah. were created in Redash. So if that's possible, I think. Just check that out exactly that, and I'm going to check also, uh, and we're going to come back on that. Great. So, so I'm on, but for your question, the thing is clear, right? What needs to be done? Yeah. So, can we assume that you are now comfortable at least in understanding? Comfortable doesn't mean you will solve it. But in understanding and the challenge and the kind of get going is comfortable, can we say? Exactly. That is true. Okay. Barakat, you are also so so. Did you change with these discussions or you're still in the so so? Uh, yeah, like one of those that I have is like when last week when we we're trying to like to do the, the work. The first thing problem was challenge was understanding the data, and then the next part was uh, configuring the environment, and it takes a lot of time. You know, like we, um, we myself were like able to do some uh, outputs like at the end of the um, submission de deadline. So uh, I was not that much working on the data or like the things that he will do or visualization or something on the DBT part. So that was my doubt now, and I have to change that setup and change to another one. Is also like much headache for me, and uh, I'm not having like to run the resources. It's difficult. So that's why like understanding the business, like what, what, what's not the, the thing that will be changed is somewhat clear for me. Uh, but like setting up the environment and having uh, working one so that you can like do the migration and like the visualization part is where I'm not comfortable. Okay, I understand. So who found it easy to set up the environment last week? So more they were struggling not on the environment but on something else. Can you raise your hand just so that let's have a conversation?
Was there anyone who was okay? You know, things, they were lucky, everything went well in setting up the environment, just uh, was just much more of the data and other stuff that is, that was more difficult or more challenging. Like the problem was, like you will set up the environment somehow properly, and then there is some some changes that you need to make, like changing the SQL version or some 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 other parts, like the MySQL mm -hmm. version or something. So when you want to do that, it takes a lot of time, like one hour or something for me. Uh, is that is that because of the connection? Yeah, somewhat the connection and also like uh, the, uh, letting the previous image and like. I'm using yeah. Windows and I'm using Docker and mm. getting the previous image and now again installing them and configuring some of uh, the ports. Uh, that, that, that was the time. I understand. I understand. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of more like the speed of the connection complicates things because you, you cannot easily change something because it takes everything takes some time. Is that the case? Do I understand it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, one thing, <laughs> the, the one problem was some of them is like when you build it, it says three point eight some GB, like for the mm. whole airflow part and something with its dependencies, and then you need to make some changes. And if you just make that change and try to figure out, it will not work. Like the authentication may not work or some parts. So you need to delete the image and reinstall or build the image again. So that one okay. also was so, taking time. So do you think it will solve the issue if we provide between now and test day the same AWS resource? Uh, I think, yeah, like uh, that that one will work better because like installing- Connection at least would be yeah, yeah, faster. Yeah, yeah like okay. making changes will not that would be that much. Better. Okay, let's try, so Let's try, we'll try, so to give, provide by tonight, I think it will be the same access, so you will not change much. Um, so we will hopefully be able to provide that. That's, that's good. Okay. And Azaria, you are also so, so like somewhat or something, sort of. How can, where are you from your perspective? Is it with these discussions, did it turn it into comfortable? Or is it similar challenge as bracket or something else? I think yeah, definitely. Um, Elias's questions were um were really insightful and uh, it definitely did make a lot of things clearer. But it, it it also made me realize the the number of things that I actually did wrong um on last week's challenge. So um I think I'm comfortable with all the technologies that are working together, but. Uh, properly finishing everything specified um, is definitely going to be a big challenge. Okay, so the, dis so the discussion was good enough to now to just to be comfortable. I mean, comfortable in this case is more of understanding and clarity. And then there are, of course, some things that need to be solved, including, for example, resource and others. But can we assume that the rest are comfortable now? Yes. Great. Okay, and um, Bani, what about your case? Yeah, so for me last week I had the problem with setting up Redash in the Docker container. And I, I spent almost the whole day and I also talked to Abu Bakr, but uh, it didn't really work out. So. <laughs> I had to use Power BI for the visualization. So, so right, right now I'm, I'm hearing that we have to write like a script where which has to get the queries from Redash to Superset. So for that one, I'm not really sure how we can do it. Mm, I understand. So, but but the conceptually, it's clear. Yeah, yeah, I understand the concept. Okay, and not only conceptually, if everything were work, to work. So was there, is that a technical challenge? So if, it, if you know if you had a fast iteration to load and load and you know kind of draw like instead of yeah. your computer now your AWS machine 
would you think like this would be different and then it's just going to be comfortable so that yeah i think aws would be much more comfortable because i'm using windows so some of the things that you have to spend like a lot of time installing them like spark i had i had an issue installing spark so i couldn't load the data using spark and i just had to like uh, i asked uh, stacy to send me like a few rows from the big data which i could use so yeah yeah so this is a good time to actually be find either dual boot in your computer or install um virtual machine in such a way that you oh. work for all these things just on a, a linux environment because i think yeah. it, you don't want to be limited i mean and I, I i'm i'm i really want you to be aggressive nothing should go unless it's a must none of your problems should go you have to be selfish to solve them immediately and by selfish i mean you have to find anyone who can help you to solve it and have that mentality because it's such an incredible mentality that it only takes a few weeks of the kind of uh, maybe unnatural kind of conscious telling yourself to do that but afterwards it becomes your conscious like an unconscious part becomes then it will change you forever just that you know a problem okay i have a problem it is not because it's relevant or not, but because it has to be done. It has to be done, and therefore I will solve it. And I don't want to drag that um, for tomorrow. It's like, if I can, I will solve it today, type of mentality. So, um, but great that you were talking to uh, Abu Bakr. We hopefully will try to give the resources such that this should be easy. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of mentality. Just keep it in mind, especially these three, four days, you know, let's be just proactive. By proactive, I mean, let's solve our problems as immediate, as quick as possible. And let's try to just capitalize, get that mentality that, you know, I am not going to be passive. I'm going to be active four days only left. I'm going to be active in those days. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I haven't heard from Christian because he didn't even, I'm not sure if, if you just join now or you didn't even comment and I find that one is that because you just come came now or yes yes I, I think that's it was that okay great because yeah, I, I I you you came late okay so how, no, no, how are you I, doing I, I, I was there also at the beginning but I guess some issues with the connection that's right but I was asking yeah. everyone to at least write something and I find it it's very important at least we trust each other in that it, it means like i don't understand anything that is one thing at least i would have liked you to write okay. i mean in a way that that's a request and systems only work if we kind of respond to each other based on requests if people don't respond systems don't work and if systems don't work usually it means trust is not established and which means makes everything hard to go on. So I, I think wherever you are in a work environment, you are responsible to respond if you are directly asking to respond. Otherwise, then work. So what what is your case? Are you sort of? Are you comfortable? Are you you haven't trade or something like you are kind of? Let's call it not so comfortable. Uh, I can say that I'm not so comfortable because, like, like Kumbani said, it's difficult when you are, doing, you are using Windows to start to sometimes packages. It's very difficult. I don't know why, but I'm trying my best to ask questions also from my colleague sometimes yes, in work and chat. So, so where are you? Right now, I think I have some issues to install Docker's. Yes. I'm not so okay. to install Docker's in my, in my, in my, my support, in my laptop. Yeah. Okay. So if now AWS machine is up, will, will that solve your problem? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think it will be great. Okay. Because especially you, given you came from a different background, statistics mm -hmm. background, You've been doing an amazing program 
in catching up in Python, as well as also doing. This should be, you know, it should be aggressive. And, the, you know, these many things probably are new, but the, the good thing is that just new things become, you know, old things once you work on them enough, right? So it's the mentality that's more important than sometimes the experience sometimes, because the experience will come. You will have more chance to experience something. But uh, mentality is much more, you will not find it. Once you are out of from here, uh, an actual job, they might just only expect you. They might help you a little bit like, okay, do it. Or what is your problem? But after two eyes, they will just be like, okay, you're not, you're not good for us, right? So they don't have the same tolerance as we have. And you have to know that this is where your trial period, it's exactly the same environment, it's work. We are also very demanding, but at the same time we are tolerant because we know, you know, we need to give you 12 weeks of uh, experience to fail so many times to get up and try because at a at, at job environment then you will fail less. So it's like kind of, okay, you will take some time, but you will demonstrate if you don't have it from the skill perspective, that means just to do the docker right there, but you will clearly communicate what is the problem and the, the needs that you want, and then they will understand, okay, you know, you are worth investing. That's what you want to be, worth investing time and worth investing, um, you know, resource. As long as you are that, any company doesn't look like, oh, you have to get all these talents, like when you get in, no. They want to check first, do you have it? Great, then, you know, you don't, you don't, then it's easy. You don't have it? Okay, that's also acceptable. Now they will ask themselves, are you worth investing? That means, do you have other things at least that makes it worth investing? That means you ask, you kind of are proactive, aggressive. Then if you are worth investing, any company will invest for you, even if it means so much money, right? So because you, your potential gives them the, the kind of an advantage. So great, we, we listen. So we try to make it uh, uh, AWS. But I expect you just your mentality, all of you, to be just like, okay, sh this is only four weeks left, and I'm gonna, you know, do the best I can. The best I can means like be aggressive and make their life miserable, make our life miserable. I grant you that. Just ask people, you know, make it so hard for us, like, to just say like, okay, these people are so asking so much questions, and we, we are not helping them. Let the problem be from us, not from your side. I am officially granting you that. I already did, but this time now, officially, four days left. It's much more of like the last round. So let's run as fast as we can. Okay. okay. Th th yes, thank you so much. Great. 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 Yes, let's do it. Rache. Okay, you mentioned that we have to raise problems that we are facing uh do we have like to 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 be like to behave like that when we are in the work environment like we when they yes. when they when we are assigned the task like do we have to tell our managers what we are yes. supposed to do yet they yet yet they give us things uh willing that we are going to do that so uh, like you you may facing blockers like yeah. asking them what yeah yes the, the simple question is yes just ask the neighbor like a senior one anyone that you think you know maybe your manager is not um is not technically capable in that case asking him is good still because you you, you may ask him differently saying like okay whom can i ask can you please let me know whom can i ask if they don't reply bug them tell them like Please, just I need to solve this thing right now, and I need someone. I don't know someone, and but then don't wait. At the same time, also bug another person. It's kind of saying like, okay, uh, you, do you know this thing? Make sure you are like the annoying person, like in this way to solve your problem. Because the most annoying you become to solve the problem, the most resource, the the more you are needed in a company. In a sense, you know, okay. by annoying, if it's for little things, as of course, if you are not putting any effort, then they probably would say like, okay, you know, you are annoying me without putting effort. Of course, at the same time, you put effort. And then even if after you send the email and say, 
thank you, I solved my problem, but don't worry, you know, like that. Okay. It's just, okay. but always, always, you are like the most selfish to solve your problem in a way that you don't want to sleep before solving your problem. If you become that, every company will find you the worst investor. Okay, and they going to think that you're not qualified. No, you are not qualified only if you don't solve a problem and if you don't ask. Okay, okay. I get it now. Yeah, so it's like I think no, everybody find someone who's asking more useful and worse investing than someone who's just quite or who's not asking and. In, if you're not asking and if you don't deliver even on time, even if you deliver it late, you are not worth investing most of the time. The okay. one worth investing is someone who is by all necessary means will deliver on time, but before that they can be as annoying as they can be. When you are determined, people like you, people love you. You know, love and hate are very similar. They hate you and they love you. They will not want anyone else other than you because you deliver on time. That's that's all that matters. All right, thank you. Nobody, uh, nobody likes uh, nice people who don't deliver. I mean, they may like just okay, blah, 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 but then it's kind of that you're good as a friend, not as a, in a company to work. Okay. Okay, so hopefully, it's clear we are like last mile, you know, just running before we are put into the real work environment. Uh, we are, I'm not saying we are not in real work environment. Whatever you have been doing in the 12 weeks has been real work. Just like wherever I am contacting the people who are designing or I am designing, I'm not giving you a toy problem. We're not giving you a toy problem. We gave you exactly what is a company needed and we demanded just like company. The only difference is that we tolerate it. In a company, of course, their tolerance level will not be like us, but that's the only difference. But the other environments keeps the same. They probably will not tell you 100 times the, way, the things that we told you. You know, ask, ask, ask. They will not tell you that much, maybe. Um, but the rest is the same. And um, so the last miles will be just like more of a mindset, mind setup, like kind of making, ensuring that you got the point. Um, but I think, you know, we're all doing well already, so it's great. And you are being tasked to do something cutting edge. It just that is being done at the moment in big companies, billions of companies, companies that that you know that are on a public um, trading, like you know, home uh, home to go, for example, is like just get traded, and you are solving their problem. You know, like so many of the things that you do are cutting edge, just like. Just right there, you get in, and by just doing what you did for for the project, you will improve the company's even profile. So you are a resource now. It's just a mindset might not tell you that, but we want to improve that with big energy. Four days to go. We'll just let's let's get energized. I know some of you are tired, but let's get energized. Okay. Anyone, any one thing you want to comment? If not, just we are done. For now, we'll meet again tomorrow. I will get back to you, Elias. I will check. Uh, Abu Bakr also will check, um, and we'll we'll try to get some of this confusion regarding like whether it's possible to the setup for the dashboards can be automated. Yeah, let's really just uh, start start the last mile today. Talk to you tomorrow then. Cheers, everyone.